Good morning, Booktube. This is Johnny. It is uh, October the 10th. It is a Tuesday. It is 8.53 in the morning. I thought I'd make a video. I noticed it's been a couple of days since I made a video. And so, yeah. So I'm sitting here. I'm always saying that. I'm sitting here. I think I sit too much. I should get off my big fat ass and do something. But anyway, I'm sitting here and I was writing in my diary for October the 10th, 2017. I'm on page 919 this morning. And I thought what I would do is talk about Christian spirituality since that seems to be what's kind of going on right now about well what I well as as I've mentioned in the past about my past when I was in seminary back in the 80s 19, 1980s I took a class on Christian spirituality with a an Anglican priest named Peter Toon. And uh, that's what renewed my interest in St. John of the Cross. And I, ever since then, I've, I've been into the contemplative life. And when I did my internship in Houston, Texas, I did a whole class on the history and the practice of prayer. I taught in adult Sunday school. So I really got into the history of prayer, the practice of prayer, all kinds of prayer, mental prayer, verbal prayer, supplication, petition, confession, all kinds of prayer, silent prayer, uh, meditation, contemplation, recollection, all these kinds of things. And I, but I had started buying books when I was in seminary. I used to buy books from a bookstore in England uh, who sold, well, I, I, when I got into Christian spirituality, I, re, I discovered that there were a lot of older books that were on Christian spirituality. That, uh, and I don't know how I came in contact with this bookstore in England, but I would buy books from them. And uh, the other day, it's like I said, I've been reading St. John of the Cross, The Ascent of Mount Carmel. One of the books that I bought at that time from England was this book. And I got it out the other day. I've looked at this book many times over the years and I just I get it out and I look at it once in a while. It's called the Crucible the Crucible of Love uh, the Study of Mysticism of Saint Teresa of Jesus and Saint John of the, of the Cross by E. W. Truman Dickin. This is supposed to be an, an authoritative work. As I have mentioned that when you get into Christian spirituality you get into the the spirituality of Saint Teresa of Avila, and you get into the spirituality of Saint John the Cross. There's not much in English; most of it is in other languages. And this is one of the best works that's in English on the uh, mysticism of, as he says here, Jesus. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, the mysticism of Saint Teresa of Jesus or of Avila and Saint John of the Cross. So I was looking at that and I, I showed you this The Mystical Evolution and Development and Vitality of the Church, by, uh, two volumes by John G. Artinero, translated by Jordan Ottoman, Father Jordan. Father Jordan Oneman. I got these when I was in Houston, Texas at a Catholic bookstore. And uh, also, 
there's a good reference book that I bought on oh, oh, a number of years ago. It's a very expensive book. I, I noticed when I was looking at it, it was a hundred and one dollars. I don't I think I got it from a friend of mine who had a, a bookstore and he gave me a deal on it. It's called The New Dictionary of Catholic Spirituality. And I got this out because I was reading the article yesterday on Carmelite spirituality because St. Teresa of Jesus and St. John of the Cross were Carmelites. They were the Catholics, the Catholics, uh, the Catalan, something like that, uh, Carmelites. So I wanted to read about Carmelite spirituality in here. Also, there's an article here I was looking at, uh, spirit, uh, Journey, Growth, and Development in the Spiritual Life. So, so these are good reference books, but there are other books that I have bought over the years. Uh, as I have mentioned that for many years, I kind of struggled over what, what does it mean to be a Christian? <laughs> and that might sound like a simple question, but for me, it was very difficult. Because I was a, I read a, I'm a student of, of systematic theology. I'm a student of church history. And as you read the history of development of dogma, as you go, read church history from the early church apostolic era, you know you read the early church, the early church fathers, the medieval, on up into the modern times. You there's all kinds of expressions of how professing Christians have lived out their spiritual lives, and so even here here in Holland, Michigan, where we live. You have the Dutch Reformed and how they live out there. I mean, Holland, Michigan now is more more diverse than it was when my wife was growing up as a girl. The Dutch Reformed were very strong here in Holland, the only really churches that were around. But now you have all kinds of denominations and groups here in Holland, Michigan. But when my wife was growing up here, it was all Dutch Reformed. Uh, you have the... Uh, You have the Reformed Church, uh, the Christian Reformed Church, and the Reformed Church of America. Anyway, so I got into the history of spirituality, and these, and these are some of the books. I'm just going to show you some of the books I bought over the years on the history of Christian spirituality. You have this series. This is really famous. I bought these when I was in seminary. <laughs> They're really in bad shape. They're all falling apart. Uh, the glue dried out. Uh, this is called The H History of Christian Spirituality, Volume 1, The Spirituality of the New Testament and the Fathers. Uh, it looks at uh, the early fathers, Latin fathers. This is by Louis Bo Bohr. And then you have uh, Volume 2, History of Christian Spirituality, Spirituality of the Middle Ages by Jean Larac, Franciscus Vanderbroek, and Louis Boyer. You have in here like uh, the Middle Ages, the Benedictine tradition, the rise of monastic orders, the rise of scholasticism, the Franciscan spring, the Midigans, you know, the whole. Christian spirituality of the Middle Ages. And then I have this one. This is uh, volume three, Orthodox Spirituality and Protestant and Anglican Spirituality by Louis Bore. So it goes up into, I think it goes up into, I think there's a volume after this. This goes up to the 18th and 19th centuries. But then you can buy, you can get these two volumes on uh, Christian spirituality, Christian spirituality origins to the 12th century, edited by Bernard McQuinn, John Migendoff, who is an authority on Eastern Orthodox, and Jean Leckrecht, which is on like uh, Catholic spirituality. 
So you have two volumes. You have a uh, volume this on High Middle Ages and the Reformation and Origins to the 12th Century. I think there's another volume that I didn't, I don't have, but this is on in the series World Spirituality and Encyclopedia History of the Religious Quest. I just have these two volumes. And then you can just buy one volume, The Study of Spirituality, editors Cheslin Jones, J Jeffrey Wainwright, and Edward Arm. These are more Anglican scholars. This is just an overview of study of Christian spirituality. And then you can buy dictionaries, the Westminster Dictionary of Christian Spirituality. Like, you can look up in here, like, uh, like, let me see here. Yeah, Carmelite Spirituality is in here. You can look up St. Teresa of Avila. Oh, all kinds of ass articles on Christian spirituality. It's a dictionary edited by Gordon S. Wakefield. And this is put out by, these are by a Methodist, the Upper Room Dictionary of Christian Spiritual Formation. Uh, now, when you go to seminaries or Bible colleges, they now have spiritual formation professors and teachers who teach about spiritual formation or spiritual growth and development. And this is another one. And then there's this one, Christian Spirituality by Alistair E. McGrath. This was a really expensive book, but it's just an overview of Christian spirituality, different themes and schools of spirituality. <coughs> and then I bought this set. Uh, this is another on uh, Christian spirituality in three volumes. This is by uh, uh, Reverend P. Perat. He was a, a French scholar, and this is was translated into English. This came out like in the, I think in like the th 1942. I bought these from England. You have it's just a history of Christian spirituality from the time. Well, this volume one is from the time of our Lord to the dawn of the Middle Ages. And then volume two is Christian Spirituality in the Middle Ages. And then volume three is Christian Spirituality Later Developments Part One from the Renaissance to Jananism. So I don't have the whole complete set either. It has a big article on St. Teresa here. A big article on St. John of the Cross. And then it go, it, the, the, the Spanish School of Spirituality. Uh, when you, uh, I, I kind of don't like spirituality after the really St. John of the Cross. Uh, I think St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila are the best. Now, I do like the Carthusians. There are some other volumes I like when it comes to spiritual writers. but And like I said, I haven't mentioned the Puritans. As I mentioned, read the Puritans, 17th century English Puritans like Thomas Goodwin and Richard Baxter and John Owen and Thomas Matton and Thomas Watson and Richard Sibbs and John Flavel. And there's a whole host of classic 17th century Puritans that you can read along with this other stuff. Uh, there's whole books on English spirituality I have downstairs I didn't bring up. So these are kind of books that I have accumulated over the years and studying what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean? How, how have Christians lived out their lives throughout the centuries all over the world? Uh, in, mid, in Syria and France and England and America. And it doesn't really go into Asians, how 
in Asia, but mostly in Europe and the Middle East and parts of Africa. But yeah, so that's what I've kind of, I just showed you some of my Christian spirituality collection. I have a ton of books on spiritual direction. Uh, when I was, many years ago, I studied spiritual direction and I didn't really know much about it and I got this little card made out. Mr. Johnny Keen, Johnny Keen, uh, I have an RE, uh, I forgot what that, what's a RE mean? I can't remember anymore. I know I have, uh, an M. Div in here, a Master of Divinity. I got a, a degree when I was in Bible college. It was a, a, a Bachelor of Religious Education. Yeah. It should be a B.R.E. and not a G.R.E. I got a Bachelor of, of Religious Education, which doesn't really get you a job anywhere. But it says Master of Divinity, Church Historian, and Spiritual Director. Well, Many when I when we first moved here to Holland, I I took spiritual direction classes with the uh, Catholic Order of the Dominicans, the Dominican Sisters, and I as I got really, as I really studied spiritual direction, I realized I had no right to make this card. I'm not a spiritual director. You have to it's you have to be trained, take classes. Uh, so I was kind of foolish to make this card. I don't hand them out. I just, I just made them when I was really dumb and I didn't know what I was really doing. I'm not a spiritual director. I'm just, if I'm anything, I'm just an elder. I'm just an older Christian guy who's gone to Bible college and seminary and read a ton of books and studied the spiritual life, its development, its growth. It's the beginning, it's in. And, uh, but like I said, the only Christian life that I know to live is the life I'm living right now as I'm sitting here drinking coffee, writing in my diary. Uh, this morning I got out to read 1 Corinthians, Reformation commentary on Scripture, Going through First Corinthians and the New Testament, the Pauline epistles, and that's all I know. I mean, I read all this stuff, but when it right comes right down to it, the only thing I can do is living out the Christian life, is living right now. October the 10th, 2017, it is now 9, 11 in the morning. Uh, Carol left this morning for her plane to fly out to Seattle, Washington tomorrow. Our son Josiah and his wife will have their baby, Mar Marika Rose. And I'll be here for two weeks living out my spiritual life. And that's all I know. I mean, I read all this stuff and it's very interesting. And But when it comes right down to it, all that there is, is right now. And right now, I'm going to close this video. And uh, I'll probably make more videos since I got all the time in the world. No one's going to be here for two weeks, just me and in silence. And uh, I'm supposed to get two books in the mail today. I'll show those tonight when I make a video tonight. So, uh, I notice I've gotten a lot more subscribers. I do thank you for the subscribers. I thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for watching my videos, because I think sometimes they must come off kind of crazy. I'm not polished. I don't edit. Uh, I'm 65 years old. I will be a grandfather soon of six grandchildren. I've been married 38 years and uh, I like writing, I like reading books, I like collecting books. I collect a lot of books, but I am always reading, always 
swimming in the ocean of words and diving deeply into language and words and books and ideas. But my supreme desire is to dive into the very depths of the Godhood. So I'll sign off. Hope you're having a good week. Until next time, bye.